Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel. Welcome to another video that I'm doing together with Marlies at Mali Design, who is right next to me here. Hello! <laughs> In our last video that you could see on Marlies channel, we have shown you a really cool technique with distress paints and we created a tag. And today we want to try out something else with embossing folders, as you can guess, and Distress Paint, which is the main medium of this series. And we are going to throw in some Distress Oxide sprays. Yay! Yay! Excited! <laughs> So let's go right into this. Let's perhaps first talk about the paper that we have here. Yes, the paper. We have two different uh, colors uh, because we would like to see uh, on both of them how they will turn out in combination with the embossing folders. And then, of course, same color palette distress paint and same color palette distress oxide sprays. And perhaps we should talk about the texture of the paper as well. Yes. This is watercolor paper. Both of these are watercolor paper, but they have a relatively different texture. This is way rougher than this one. And they both have a smooth side on the back. So perhaps we will decide for either the one side or the other side, depending on which folder we will use later. And the main idea behind this technique is to use the paints as a resist on the raised areas of the, for, um, of the embossed papers. And then later on spritz some oxide spray and reveal the paint after that. Uh, so we decided to uh, divide uh, those papers over those four pieces of uh, embossing folders. The first one is the embossing folder from Sizzix and Tim Holtz and the, the number is 665733. And uh, the paper that we are going to use is the lighter colored paper with the smooth side up. For the second one, this is also uh, from Sizzix and Tim Holtz, the number is 666156 and we have decided to do the textured uh, side up. Uh, over here, the number of this folder is 665753. We decided to do the more textured side on top. And the last one is 666049 and the smooth side of this black paper will go on the top. <clears throat> and why did you choose to use the textured side for some folders and the smooth side for others? It all has to do with uh, the folder itself, because when we take a good look at this folder, it has more details. We will hold it up to the camera so you can see closer. It has more details, so we think with the smoother paper, we will get a better result. And the other way around with this, for example, um, the impression that you get from this folder screams for texture I would say <laughs> so that those little stones here get a really nice texture from the paper as well and not only from the folder we thought it could be good to take the textured side for this so perhaps you want to keep that in mind when you choose the folder from your stash that you want to use for your own papers. Before I run this through my machine, I will spritz a little bit of water, just like this, to the paper. That helps that the paper doesn't rip when I run that through the machine. And if you have a 3D embossing folder, it helps to put it into an angle like this. And then put the other plate on top, then you can get it through your machine easier. So we have run them all through the machine, the embossing machine. I will hold it up closer to the camera so you can see the beautiful imprint. Oh, wow, that is that one is so beautiful. One of my absolute favorites. So Amazing. beautiful. Amazing. And this is the one with the stones. Look at that texture. 
yummy. Even in white, it's really beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Would you would you like to show the other two? You. This is one of my favorites as well. Really, really cool. And even on the black, you can already see this distressed, like hammered background be behind the numbers. Really interesting, yeah. but we can turn that into something even more awesome. Here we have the wood. <sighs> Wonderful. Yeah. <clears throat> so next, let's talk about the colors that we've chosen from the Distress Paints by Ranger. On the left, you can see ground espresso and on the right, you can see weathered wood. <laughs> Shake it, shake. <laughs> so, <laughs> while Marlies is shaking the bottles, I'm taking a brayer. Oh, and I will give you a brayer as well, so that you yes, please, so I can do don't mine. Get bored. Where is it? Oh, here. And now we are going to roll a really, really thin layer of paint to our folders here. And let's try to get that really loose because we've experienced, I guess, that that gets better result. results. Don't overthink this. So we found out with some experiments in the beginning um, before recording this video that it is better to add several really thin layers then one or two really thick layers because the distress paint is relatively fluid and then it can happen that too much of the paint runs into those little creases and you get those blobby is that a word yeah <laughs> areas <laughs> and that is perhaps not so nice where's my paper I want to have the brown um, can you please tell me what we are doing here is this your side and I have to do this or what do we do we already did it <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah okay, okay. <laughs> so <then> it's <laughs> already done <laughs> yeah. yeah right genau weiß ich was ich tun muss es ist immer nicht so einfach wenn hier noch einer sitzt und man weiß gar nicht was man hier machen darf muss ein bisschen aufpassen uh, und I have to und <laughs> crazy over here really oh my god all those languages <laughs> uh, and i have chosen to do the opposite from louise so uh, my first layer is the ground espresso and my second layer to add just a little bit of the weathered wood and <clears throat> we are just playing around in different ways so we can show you maybe different results or uh, to let you know which way would work uh, better or maybe a little bit less Okay, so we have uh, talked about the different uh, papers with a textured side and also a smooth uh, side. Um, but why did we choose for a lighter color paper and a darker color paper, Louise? Yeah, that uh, seems to be a little bit confusing um, since we've talked about the oxide sprays that we want to use later. And perhaps you think that makes not so much sense on black paper. But you will see in a few minutes, hopefully, <laughs> that that totally makes sense because um, the effect, of course, gets totally different on a black paper than on a white paper. But because we've used the paint, which is staying in the color that it has now and not soaking in like oxide spray, for example, it gets a really, really grungy look in the end and that's what we are uh, trying to achieve here but i just think i need a little bit more ground espresso there i will steal the rest from you there i think that's enough so i guess we are coming to uh, close to the point where we are satisfied with what we have here and we are going to let this air dry and then go on with the next steps <laughs> I guess Tim would say now, could you use a heat tool now? <laughs> yes, you, yes could. you could. You could. But um, that would warp the paper a lot. And 
We need a coffee and a tea, I guess. <laughs> yes, tea for me, please. <laughs> tea for you, coffee for me. And uh, yeah, that is a good time for that because then this can dry by its own. Perfect timing. Okay, so we have our coffee and our tea <laughs> and this is dry. And uh, we've just decided that we want to add some highlights, some just lighter areas by adding some more of the weathered wood paint, also in a really thin coat. I think that is better, but don't cover all of the ground espresso, Louisa. Yours is way better. I've just realized that I covered up much of the ground espresso, but that's no problem. Just go in and add a bit more of that, especially on those numbers. I like those like mm, that looks like peeled paint in the end, like something would uh, like something is painted with several layers of paint and then some of that peeled off. I think this should do the thing. It looks good. Yeah. So we are going to let this air dry again and then we are going to add the oxide sprays. So when this has dried, the fun can begin. <laughs> yes, the fun part. <laughs> Spraying. Spraying. We have chosen Distress Oxide Sprays in the colors Pumice Stone and Ground Espresso. Mm, for those papers, we wanted to stay in a really neutral color palette. Of course, you could do this whole thing with other colors as well. Every color combination would work, of course. So let's just spritz. What do I have here? Ground espresso. Okay. <laughs> ah, do you cover everything here with pumice stone? Uh, do we, can I? <clears throat> yeah, just do that. Maybe, I mean, uh, maybe on this corner. Leave too. space for ground espresso. Oh, yeah, <laughs> maybe a little bit. Yeah, well, that's even more fun. Shall, I, shall I spray yours yeah, to them when you have the per do first uh, layer? <laughs> 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 You know, that feels like a really weird game, but it's really fun. If you have a crafty friend, do it exactly like this and don't <laughs> don't change the sprays. Um, beforehand, we've discussed that we start with uh, each color per person and then we change the color. But this is way more fun. And you can also, ooh, I'm just realizing so something that is not like a joke, but I mean it really, you know, for a project, <laughs> it could be really helpful if you do it exactly like that, that, for example, if you are alone, take both sprays like this, yeah, one in your left and one in your right, yes, yeah. hand, and look at the whole thing. Because I'm just realizing, um, before we did that, I've just looked at my both black pieces here. Yeah. And now I'm looking at the whole thing. And if you are looking for a more cohesive look of all of the embossed pieces... Uh, because you, for example, want to put them in the same journal, it would make totally sense to um, look Col over the whole thing. Color coordinated. Yeah, yeah. So, here fehlt noch was. Could you please uh, put some there? Because I think, yeah. And the dark one over yeah. here, please. This corner, perhaps. Yeah. I think it's good to pay attention to the edges. On the black paper, it's perhaps not so extreme because the contrast is not so big. But on the white paper, if you have those like um, sprinkles on the edges, here, for example, perhaps I can lift that up. Here, for example, you can see there's the white of the paper coming through. Of course, that can look interesting as well, but perhaps you don't like it, then pay attention to spritz here to the edges as well. Mm. Yummy. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to let this air dry as well to make sure that the paper can't warp too much. You could use your heat gun for that, but again, it would be like 
ja, wavy in the end. Ja, wobbly blobbly. <lacht> wobbly blobbly. Wobbly wobbly bobbly or something. And if you want to mount that to a card, for example, then you probably want to have it really flat. So we would suggest to let it air dry. Um, but if you want to tear it up and make a junk journal cluster out of it, then of course you could also use your heat gun because it doesn't matter if it's like wonky. Okay, we are back and this is totally dry now. And now we want to reveal the colors of the distress paint with two different methods. And for that, we will also change our papers a little bit. So this is what you have seen in the last step. But now we are going to do it like this so that Malis has a black based paper and a white based paper here. And I have the same here. Perhaps I should even do it like this so that... The white is on top and the black is on the bottom so that you can see <clears throat> the results that we get with different methods of revealing the paints. Cloth. Months. Cloth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So my way of trying to uh, get off the top layer of um, the Distress Oxide is to use an old cloth and I'm just going to damp it with a little bit of water not soaking wet but just a little bit and then trying to yeah swipe on the top areas and see what comes off and why is that possible perhaps we should explain <coughs> that as well it is possible because uh, like the <coughs> oxide sprays are not water resistant they are water soluble so uh, we sprayed it on top so that top layer must be removable yeah and it will not dry completely on the surface of the of the dried paint no. so the paint is now um like a resistant for the oxide spray so that yeah. we can get it off exactly there where the paint was yes my technique is a little bit different because and we've just discover, discovered that <laughs> yesterday when we planned this video we found out that we can also if i can open it ooh, <laughs> You can also do it uh, with with such a thing. This is just like a scrubbing box that you can use for cleaning your stamps. Normally you put some water and perhaps like a little bit of soap to the one side and rub the stamp over that and then just dry it on the other side just by rubbing over it as well. And this like fluffy material, can you see that? It's like it has a little fur and that is really, really good for, on the one hand, cleaning your stamps and on the other hand, for getting this off in a different way than you can get it off with the cloth. So if you have something like this, perhaps you want to try that out. Is that already enough? Oh, try it. Yeah, you don't like, want to speak no, with me anymore. No, no I was uh, I was thinking. Um, you know, I just want to go in slowly, not immediately yeah. with a lot of water. Yeah. That makes sense. So I will put a little bit of water here to my uh, thing here. Oh, that looks good. Shall I also start with the black paper? Yeah, let's. Uh, Let's get going. I will put that out of the way so that I can go a little bit more into the frame. Now I'm just laying my hand down to the paper with no pressure. It's just that I can move the paper around without having it in the air. I mean, you can't do it like this, otherwise it will not touch the fibers here. So I'm just putting my hand here and I'm starting really, really carefully. So when I uh, turn this over, you can see this already looks really, really gorgeous. So as you can see there where the two is, um, a lot of the oxidation has already gone with the water. And you could of course leave it like it is. Malis, what do you think about my result here? That looks awesome. It's yeah, really that, irregular. Yeah, beautiful. But we can try to get a little bit more off by just pressing a little bit heavier with your hand. Aber wenn das bisschen trockener ist, ist das besser. I'm just realizing when um, you rub it and the thing is 
drier, more dry than we had yeah. it yesterday when we tried it out. It's easier because here nothing smears. Yesterday when we yeah. tried it out, it do you remember? Yeah. yeah, it was too wet and then it was like this smear over here. Yeah. You can get rid of that with a paper towel just rubbing over it, but I guess um, when you do it like this, it gets a better result. Yeah, and it's even more grungier. Yeah. So I will hold mine up to the camera. I have removed um, some of the oxide sprays on this side of the paper with the old cloth and a little bit of water. And let me give you a close up. Can I already begin or do you want to do uh, an introduction? That was my introduction. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we are. I'm just going to start then. That's fine. So this is uh, the white paper. And I really... Oh. Yeah, it already looks good. I'm really curious. But um, I will use the other side of my box here now. Can you see that here it's already like really white? I mean, I could just clean that off, of course, but I will just use this side because I don't have time to clean that off now. I can't leave Marlies al alone here. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going uh, in slightly on this folder, also a damped cloth. Uh, but this time I added a little bit more water just to see if there is any difference in the begin stages of uh, revealing the paint. <gasps> but I think this uh, will turn out beautiful. Uh, you can begin with just a little bit of pressure and build up your pressure along the way and just see how the paper reacts and also how the colors are uh, coming through. So here you can see the difference between having the white of the oxidation um, on top and on the other side you can see the revealed paint. <clears throat> So I will hold mine up a little bit closer to the camera also, just to show you how it looks after revealing the paint. Ooh, wow. And I think this really, really looks like stone. We've, ooh, we've compared both of these and we just found out something. Um, both of these are made on the textured side of the watercolor paper with a really solid embossing impression. And there you can see way more grunge. The texture is way more defined than on the others. And I think it's because of the detail. Yeah. <clears throat> Look here, it looks nice, but it's not so grungy. And the you can see that there's no texture on the raised areas except what you got from the folder itself. I mean, uh, here with the wood, um, you have really much texture in the folder itself, but not so much from the paper. On this one, it looks like um, there's much of the oxida oxidation left on the paint. Can you see that compared to the thing that Marlies had on her side here? Here you can see way more contrast, way more of the revealed paint. But here I have the feeling I can only see where that wood here and the ground espresso here, but it still feels like there's this chalky finish on top that was left. And um, I guess it is because you can't um, do this like rubbing off so controlled with this box here then you can do it with the cloth um i think you had way more control yes i did and you can make different movements for yourself to try out because uh like on 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 this one i went in the direction uh, with the stones you can try that but you can also make circular motions like that and sometimes with a very detailed embossing folder that is quite uh, can be quite difficult when you um, uh, do different movements you can also tear those little uh, details yeah yeah it's yeah that's also of course something 
that we should um, be aware of, that we don't tear the impression or that we don't press too hard th yeah. so that everything gets flat. Um, and another really big difference is that you can see what you do yeah. when you have this in front of you and you rub over it. And when I have to take this and put it like so, can, I can't see anything. No, you cannot see yeah. where to... Yeah. yeah. So what I want to try here is to spritz really much water and then just let that drip off and let come off what is probably too much here. Perhaps that could be an interesting technique as well. <clears throat> yes. Uh, and for me, uh, on this one, uh, I am going to try with the new uh, Tim Holtz sending discs uh, in some kind of a circular motion, not too big, but a little bit closer together. Uh, with those motion, I will try to get off um, maybe one of those extra layers that is on top of there. And uh, so we can even reveal the bottom layer. So the light colored paper and let's see if we can get it a little bit more to the top. Yes, I will start slowly. Uh -huh. <laughs> I have the feeling that this helped a lot. Ooh. Did you already dabbed dabbed it with a cloth, or I no. I just let it just let it drip drip down. And see how it reacts. But I don't know how I can show that. Ooh. Perhaps like this, you can can you see this yellow stuff that's coming off there? Yes, you can see really really well. So, um, this is ooh, approximately here. This is the area where no water was. Um, I have to say the cam the camera can't pick that up so well, but with the eye you can see that it is here, way sharkier than here. I have sanded down this paper for you, but only the left side, so we can see the difference between uh, sanding and not sanding your paper. I will hold it up closer to the camera, and you can definitely see a big difference. So on this side you can see those little uh, dots and that is the um, paper that we started with, the lighter paper. And I think it gives a nice contrast because you now have different types of colors from light, medium and a little bit darker. Mm, but <clears throat> we should also talk about why we can in this case, with these pieces that we have here now, uh, why we can only do that on the white paper. I mean, I can, of course, take <coughs> the sanding disc. You can do that too. And I can do it here as well. But in this case, for this video, ooh, it is not totally dry here. I have to be really careful. I will do it only in the corner here. For this video, we can only do it on both of these and not on these because mm -hmm. this is just black paper and the whole paper is black so it has a black uh, side on this side and it's black also on this side uh, that means when you have uh, your sanding disc and you're going to send the bottom layer still stays black so that does not make a difference but when you take um, some other kind of paper with a black topping but like a craft bottom uh, this is one from the craft stock package from Tim Holtz. Um, then uh, you will have a great result because you will send off the raised areas that are black in first place. But after sending, this color will appear on the top. I can just make an example here at the corner so that they can see it. Yeah, let's do that. So here you can see the craft paper comes through because I'm just sanding off the black of the paper and then you can see the color of this. 
Um, and of course, that doesn't work here because we've not used this paper. Why? <laughs> I yeah, mean, we haven't thought about now that we before. are sorry about um, that yeah <laughs> <laughs> but um we also have to say we have experimented a little bit with this technique and then we came to the idea to use the sanding disc that was originally also not the plan to do that we came to that idea while we experimented but i think that's the cool thing about those techniques you can always try out something and also compare things on one and the same background and then you can decide what you like better you could also make some notes so that you can remember what you've done and that's a cool thing the next time if i would uh, like to use black i would definitely use this paper yes definitely <clears throat> i will just uh, quickly put this information from the packaging to the camera so that you can check that out if you want this is called craft stock black and there are 24 sheets um, in a package and they are yeah like this size that is six inch by nine inch approximately 15 by 22 centimeters genau genau denkst du auch wir sollten eine schokolade essen mm. i see them all the time and I thought, mm, okay i will wait i will wait <laughs> yes let's do that oh. I would like to ask you, Marlies, what would you do with those pieces if you had done them at home? How would you use them? Ooh, nice question. Um, when I look at... Um, I look at them differently. Because when I look at this piece, I will maybe cut the numbers and use it as an embellishment mm -hmm. on uh, your journal in a collage or something, you know, tiny attacher, piece of fabric mm -hmm. uh, underneath. Um, you could do, do that. Uh, this one is very, very beautiful for a little journal cover. Uh, let me show you. Yeah, I'm not going to bend it all the way, but you can already imagine when you do like this. It's an amazing cover for a little journal. So that is an idea. Um, when I take a closer look to this wood, um, I could think about maybe a scenery or a background for a scenery. Uh, you can also think about because the paper is black and then using it for something for Halloween. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a great base. Maybe on a panel, you glue it on a panel or like an etc. tag. And then this one, um, yeah, I really, I really like <laughs> this one. It turned out so good. Uh, you can even um, cut or tear if you like it more rough than tear. You can tear some pieces off and also layer it in like a cluster. And with layering, I mean, then you will have like some loose threads underneath, little pieces of fabric sticking out, maybe um, like a die cut word on top, um, staple it down. Uh, yeah, just make some little clusters for your journal. And uh, what about you, Louise? Would you like to add something to that? I'm really happy with my cutting here. <laughs> <laughs> I will show you the amount of days per year that I... Don't look yet. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to be sweet. Other, otherwise, I will spoil, <laughs> spoil it. <laughs> I will show you the amount of days per year that I would like to have you here at my caravan and work and craft and talk to you. Oh, okay. I'm very curious right now. Oh, three hundred and ninety-two. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> well, I can spend all day with you every day of the year. So yeah, and it feels like it feels like that a year has more days because it's just fantastic. Oh, awesome! That's so nice. <laughs> so, <laughs> besides that, um, let me pick up the others as well. Mm. So. As Marlies already said, these would look great as little tiny accents in your journal for ephemera. You could also take them ooh, and turn them into tiny tags. I just think about that. If there's a little bit more space above the number, you could also 
just cut it like that and poke a tiny hole then you have a little wonky mini tag yeah and when you hold it up or you put it up on this like I said when you make like a mini cluster that already looks like grungy and then of course with some layering underneath that is already such a great effect yeah. you could also make um, this into a card for example for a man I'm just thinking about because this yeah. is really masculine I would say yeah. and if you want to use those numbers for his age or for the birthday or for a special day where two people have met for example 27th of May uh, 1939 <laughs> 1939 <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's where it's a little bit constructed but <laughs> you get what I mean yeah. I guess I think the, all of these um, folders in those color combinations uh, work really well for masculine projects. And what I also thought when you said Halloween, could you please uh, give me these things that we made yesterday? Um, I can also imagine to turn them into Franken pages. We have um, yesterday cut these to try things out. So here you can also see some other results that we could get with exactly the same technique. Um, and I can imagine to take these pieces and put them back together for junk journal pages just by sewing them together or gluing them to another paper for making cards so that you just have fragments of these on one base. I would go with squares probably because yeah then you have a relatively big amount of the impression of the folder when this is the width it would make sense to have a square I guess so that you can see something a little bit more of the folder and not just I mean you could go with tiny pieces as well but that would probably make not so much sense for some folders but I can, could imagine doing that. And with a black thread or a white thread, or even for Halloween, orange thread in the sewing Ooh, machine. Yeah, or maybe purple, orange mm -hmm. or purple. Yeah, awesome. Or really bright green would also work. Yeah. And the next uh, thing that comes to my mind when <laughs> I see those pieces, that it's already, uh, when you have your journal and your journal pages, there is already a pocket. I mean, mm -hmm. you have it like this or you have it like this and stitch it down and you are already good to go. You have an immediately a pocket and already a, a perfect base to work on even further for a little collage or a little embellishment. Yep. Um, okay, so uh, Malis, what about you? Do you need another tea? I mean, I need a coffee now. Yeah, I can use a cup of tea too. Yeah. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> So we have to say goodbye, but before that, just make sure that you visit Mali's channel and subscribe to her channel. Watch the other videos of our series. You can find the link to the playlist down below in the description box. And hopefully we will see you the next time. Yes, looking forward to that. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.